Kingdom Hearts 3 dominated E3 this year. Series director Tatsuya Nomura said that come this month we would learn so much about the game and I think it's safe to say he delivered. Square Enix and Disney sure brought at this year's E3 event with three new trailers, all of them being an insane talking point the days they release. There's so much to talk about. We got Frozen and Pirates of the Caribbean confirmed to be new worlds, a nice look at a cooking mini game involving Remy from Ratatouille, the appearance of Lee and Kyrie in the new engine, plus a ton of other things that really makes the game look like it's it's going to be a real treat to experience. As I've listed, a lot of things were added in these three trailers. But even with everything we've seen, there's lots of things I bet some of you didn't notice. Here I found 10 things that you might have missed from Kingdom Hearts 3 at E3 2018. Coming in at number 1, we've got the Mobile Portal. The Mobile Portal was a device that was revealed in a short video at the Kingdom Hearts Union Cross fan event back in April. Fans originally thought it was just a device to play the new classic Kingdom game on, which are these cute little game and watch mini games that you can collect and play throughout the game. This device in the Square Enix Showcase trailer was shown being usable as a communication device, basically a phone. Sora and Yanzo are both talking to each other through this device, which means throughout the game we'll likely be able to communicate with anyone we need to without actually having to travel all the way to the respective of world, which is going to be very convenient for Sora and the group if that's the case. The Gummy Ship in Kingdom Hearts 3 is looking different and in a good way. Nomura stated that Gummy Ships in Kingdom Hearts 3 will be entirely customizable and have a type of open world gameplay, which is exciting to hear about because the Gummy Ship was never necessarily the best thing about the Kingdom Hearts experience, but hearing that developers are putting some more things into it is nice to hear. In the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer revealed at the Microsoft press conference, which debuted the new Frozen World along with the Gummy Ship, you can see in the background of this Gummy Ship scene that there is an interesting ice theme going on, which leads me to believe our Gummy Ship routes may be themed after the world we're traveling to. On top of that, you're able to collect money during your Gummy Ship missions now, which if Kingdom Hearts 3 is as big as they're claiming, you might end up needing a lot of. Pirates of the Caribbean is by far looking like the best world in the game, with pirate fights, open skies, which aren't so open because they're full of enemies, and being able to dive deep underwater and explore other islands, this world is looking like it's going to be its own mini open world game. If you play Kingdom Hearts 1, I'm sure you definitely remember these little things. Their official names are Power Wilds. They were extremely annoying in Kingdom Hearts 1 because unlike a lot of the other Heartless, I couldn't just press X and do a couple of magic spells to easily defeat them, because no matter what difficulty you play, on, they had really good AI, and predicted your movement at times. These things are returning in the returning Pirates of the Caribbean world, which fits them just fine it seems. There's a lot of debate whether Remy from Ratatouille, who appeared in the Square Enix Showcase trailer, has his own world, is a Link option, or is a minigame, which you can imagine, he is only one of those things, and that is a minigame. The purpose of the minigame is for Sora to look around for ingredients, bring them back to Remy, so he can cook up a meal, which will give you a temporary status upgrade. Seeker of Darkness member Zigbar is going to be the one messing with Sora throughout the Olympus world. Kingdom Hearts 3 worlds are going to be having a theme to them where each of the worlds has one of the 13 Seekers of Darkness messing with Sora attempting to get inside of his head. I like this approach a lot because in previous entries there would always be a dull moment in the game where there would be no story progression at all. In this title it seems like that problem won't be an issue, since there is a main villain in each world meaning more story progression and us finding out more info about the new organization. This is going to make Kingdom Hearts 3's pacing very good if done properly. If you pay attention closely to a certain spot in the trailer with Marshmallow, the snow creature Elsa creates in the movie, you can see that while Sora is finding it, he can use the surrounding trees to provide damage. I find that really cool because it shows how much the environment may play into combat. I'm curious to see how other worlds implement this as well. Fun fact, series director Tetsuya Nomura in an interview post E3 said that Marshmallow will lend you his strength in this world, and Anna and Elsa won't be party members, which is interesting to think about. This was a very easy one to miss, but in this scene while Sora is doing his attraction full ability, you can see in this still that the ice tine is in the background, meaning this is likely the Ice Titan boss fight. It seems like a heavy theme of Olympus Coliseum is going to be Attraction Flow, so expect that throughout a lot of the fights in this world. Attraction Flow looks like a new thing that is very fun to use, so I'm sure we don't mind at all. You'll be happy to hear that in Kingdom Hearts 3 in the Frozen World, Olaf's voice actor Josh Gad will be reprising his role as the beloved movie character. This is a very good thing to hear because recently with Kingdom Hearts 3, it seems like they've been having a little bit of difficulty getting the original voice actors to reprise their roles 
controls, Toy Story being a big example of this. This is the weirdest one to point out on this list, but Sora rarely doesn't wear gloves. The only world from what I've researched, yes I've researched this, where he doesn't wear gloves is in Atlantica, in both Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts 2. Reason I mention this is because in the parts of the Caribbean world, in Kingdom Hearts 3, Sora is also not wearing gloves, and it's weird. Not in the bad way, but in the I'm not used to seeing this way. Just something to point out. So we went through the last few things kind of fast, so let's slow it down a bit. In the scene from one of the trailers, you see Sora still in his Kingdom Hearts 2 outfit, where Riku and Mickey walk through the door in the outfits they were given to travel through the realm of darkness with. I point this one out because it could mean that Mickey and Riku at this point have already traveled to the realm of darkness, and that cutscene where Aqua gets norted has already taken place. Which would mean right out the gates in Kingdom Hearts 3, after Sora is done with Olympus, Riku and Mickey have possibly failed their mission already. I'll take my own little guess here as well, and say that this is a scene where Sora will likely retrieve his new outfit. Those are 10 things you likely missed from Kingdom Hearts 3 at E3 2018. This video was made for those fans of the series who don't sit there analyzing trailers for hours like a lot of us do and wanted to find out some cool things without having to dig through hundreds of separate videos. Tell me below, what was your favorite thing you found out about in this video? I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did, you already know what to do. Leave a like on today's video to let me know if you would like to see more videos like this one. Share the video with a friend or family member who loves Kingdom Hearts. Finally, the best way to support the channel is by clicking that red subscribe button with notifications on so you never miss a upload again. Thank you everyone who watched this video here today. My name is Prodigy and I will talk to you guys soon. Peace out.